The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Pulse School Series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. I have here with me today Robin Bonas Davidson, who is with Lakeland College. How's it going today? Good, good, great day for a field tour. Absolutely, so we are here today talking about lupins. Now, do you wanna tell me what are lupins? <laughs> lupins are a new to us protein, um, sorry, new to us pulse crop. Um, they are a crop that we have kind of looked over the fence to Europe and Australia and seen that they're having quite a bit of success with this new crop called lupins. And so we've decided to give them a try in Canada. We've been playing around with them for quite a while um, trying to figure them out bringing over new varieties and things like that so we're we're pretty excited about the potential so there's two different main varieties you look at correct yeah we look at two two types there is a number of types but the two that we're focusing on are it, narrow leaf blue lupin and white lupin so they are a very similar um, plant in, in their agronomic packages but they're, they are have some significant differences in in the uh, the characteristics of the plant and maturity issues and things like that but. and one of the big things i know you're highlighting when it comes to lupins is protein content and it's it's yeah. quite a bit higher than other pulse crops correct yeah field pea comes in somewhere around 20 to 25 cara and then we jump up to fava beans which will take us probably from about 28 to 32 ish and then we have lupins that start at that 32 and can go as high as 40. So with that high protein content it's mostly for the feed market or what what sort of, sort of markets we're looking at here? Well I would say that the main market that lupins are going for kind of around the world is for the animal feed market. Um, they are they are seen as a very nice alternative to soybean so especially in Western Canada where soybean is, is an issue in especially in Saskatchewan and in Alberta to grow them um, lupin might have a better fit that way so animal feed for sure but there's also a lot of work going into like um, fractionation and using them in food products. So there's a lot of um, non-dairy based products or alternatives that lupins are being used for. So you see a lot of that. Yeah, you see a lot of that when you look into the, to the feed market and fractionation as well. They're trying to use the lupin protein in, and sneak it into our foods. Now, domestically marketability or is this all for the foreign market that we would sell well, to? Well, up until recently, it's been a foreign market. It's been trying to get them, ship them down to Asia, over to Europe, up in, in areas like that but we are currently developing a domestic market we're working with a, a company called Lupin Platform Inc um, that is doing contracted acres across Alberta and that is giving us what we haven't had for a long time and that's a market a way to sell them a way to put farmers money in their pockets and actually make money off these things so yeah now I mean of course we're always looking for different crops to add to the rotation but yep. what's another big reason that farmers should be considering lupins maybe well one of the things that I'm excited about with lupins is because we have some diseases coming in the dreaded aphanomyces that people are hearing a lot about that is affecting our peas and lentils and of course if you look at the acreage across Western Canada that pretty much is it most of it is peas and lentils so by if we have the ability to bring lupins into the, the rotation then I have the ability as a pulse researcher to give these um, farmers another protein um, crop that they can keep in their rotation so another pulse crop to keep in their rotations so that we don't have to lose that um, but the benefits of a, of a pulse crop so and in any of your trials have you seen any insect uh, troubles well right now the pests in general are pretty low um, we do see a little bit of blister beetle that's a new one to us it shows up it's mostly in Selvin Alberta but we're starting to see it more especially after a couple dry years um, they're, they're showing up quite a bit but as far as intact insect pressure as a whole very very little and that would extend to diseases as well I already mentioned a and then being resistant to resistant to that but we haven't really any major root diseases that are really affecting it either we do know that fusarium can be a little bit of an issue and we've seen that but we also have some really successful fungicide products that we can use as seed treatments that are helping alleviate that and so in the research that we've done it doesn't really matter which seed treatment you choose just choose one put it on and the lupins seem to be pretty happy Happy. Yeah. So speaking of dry though, what, what kind of climate are we looking at here? What do they like to be grown in? Well, they're, they're 
They're moisture loving. Okay, so they're they're not going to be um, an answer for drought. Definitely not. They do like quite a bit of moisture. They have a fairly significant tap root on them, Kara. So they're not going to do well in really light sandy soils where they're not getting a lot of um, a lot of moisture. So I would say Central Alberta, the Highway 2 corridor, perfect, or in areas of Saskatchewan where we have on the least on the you know east western side. No, eastern side. Sorry, where they have more moisture, they'll do better. Okay, sure. yeah. awesome. Well, thank yeah. you very much for your time. Yeah, well, thank you, Kara. Good to talk to you.